All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'm glad, actually glad to see this many people in here. Uh, Patrick and I are going to get a, give an update on the Geeko Foundation and uh, show you some numbers and you know, show you what we've been doing the past year. So you want to go ahead? So um, it's, it's really good to see so many names, so many faces that I can't see because of the lights. So there's no point having my glasses. Um, so last two years, whoop. gotta go back. So we were formed in 2022. Um, plain, plain English aim of the foundation is to to have a place to donate and collect and, and dispense funds from donations to the worldwide community, which we also are aiming to grow through various means and, and ways. Hold it closer to you. Sorry. <clears throat> and also, there's a possibility of a new namespace, of course, with the organisation sponsoring the Geeko, geekos.org project or projects, whatever might happen. Um, we're getting... We're getting we're getting funds already, which we'll see in a second. This is a five-slide five, star, five slide re presentation, by the way, so it's pretty pretty rapid. Uh, and there's also we're also getting TSP uh, travel support funds. Yeah, so so I'll cover that real quick. I had the slides, and unfortunately, something happened my computer. Uh, but but the numbers overall are pretty good, at least for uh, this this particular event. We were looking at pending. Uh, it was about ten thousand dollars that were going toward the TSP for people to come here. Since then, that actually has not, a, um, it has not, we won't spend that much because not everyone got visas and things of that nature. So the funds kind of still sit there, but at least they're there and they're going for a good cause and we're getting people to the two events, which is kind of a partial pur purpose to that. Um, and then if you look at like uh, the Google Summer of Code, uh, it allowed us to actually take in funds from the Google Summer of Code and send some mentors to uh, the summit that Google puts on. So, but overall, basic numbers I could give you down uh, as far as the current account. I mean, it's it's uh, well, it's based in three currencies, and so I think it's well. You have the he'll show you the numbers of like what was brought in, but I think we're somewhere around ten or sorry, we were about eighteen thousand. Dollars, twenty thousand dollars, and at the end of this, it'll probably be more like twelve. But we're waiting on more to come in, and there is constantly funds coming in based on uh, various streams of, uh, shall we say, um, people buying swag and things like that. So, or, or not even people buying swag. There are up there. There's loads of uh, donations coming via the website. Um, well, you'll see a slide about if I'll go there now. Um, so. What have we done with the money? And where have we been? So we've been to the Doors Cluck, um last year and the year before, uh, this year and last year. We're going to scale at Fosdam, all these places. Sometimes we've been holding, having a, a stand where we've had a, 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 a card machine where we've taken donations, um, and others we've just made, been a, been there as a present presence. Um, and we're hoping to continue and uh, going to more and more events, um, basically spreading the Open SUSE name because that's what we're here to do or, or whatever whatever it becomes in the future so in the last 12 months we've raised 25,000 euros um, a little bit more um, and out of that there's 2,000 euros that we've, we've raised at, at events and what's interesting about that is we've only been to four events where we've had the machine and so the machine's actually been out only for for maybe five days total. Um, and that's pretty impressive, I think. We got a thousand euros from FOSDEM, um, which before would never have gone anywhere except maybe in the, into the hands of the FOSDEM organizers. So that's come straight into, into the big Geeko's uh, bank account. And we can, that's now for us to, to dispense the way we want. Um, at, uh, at the SUSACOM uh, last uh, last couple of weeks, we had a lot of donations coming in, and some of that is we had one person from SUSA, you might be out there somewhere, um, who gave 200 euros, 200 pounds actually, um, no questions asked. I had to say, Are "You sure? That's 20, 200 pounds?" He said, "Yep, that's much. That's much. I want to donate." 
So it's pretty su pretty successful um, in terms of the money we've raised. And the, I think it's quite important to, to realise that we're not really working that hard to get this money. We've got the website, we've got the the um, the swag sales and the t-shirts and things like that, but we're not out there actively promoting. We do have donations from Arm and from from Google. Um, we've got you know this is this is a, a total number that we've raised, um, including the money we've come from that's come from Suda as well. Um, so we've got some future plans, and they're more they're. Um, we need to get some more options for fundraising as well as to, to work at it harder. Um, we need to get some infrastructure. So we're, we're, um, we're working with a couple of, corporate uh, a couple of uh, infrastructure providers like Equinix to see if we can get some decent um, stuff at a very good price. Um, we've also got, we're discussing uh, engagement with corporate donors, uh, which is where the big money will come. Um, and we've also got a laptop project, which uh, when I was at FOSDEM, uh, I was speaking to someone who's got 12,000 laptops at his university that he doesn't know what to do with, and the, the, the uh, university don't know what to do with. So we, <laughs> because they're last year, right? Um, so the thing is that we, we had the option to reload those with a, the with a flavour of OpenSUSE. Um, and, and distribute them to people in need or, or communities in need or, or whatever. We've got another, there's a potential for the same thing in, in Croatia. There's uh, two or three hundred laptops, maybe more, that I, that I know about so far. There's a lot more. Um, so that might mean that we can get SUSE at almost no cost, open SUSE to get uh, at, at almost no cost into the hands of people who A, need it, and, and B, it's, it's an introduction to open SUSE. Um, so we've got a number of different means of donation. That's the, um, that's the, the Geeko pod, which is actually point of, a point of donation. So it's a pod system that's basically, I've renamed and, and written. Um, and we take that to events, and as I said, we get random amounts of money. Sometimes we do it in exchange for, for swag, like caps or, or, or Geeko, um, Geeko plushies. But a lot of the time, people just want to donate because they've got too many plushies already. Well, actually, you can never have too many plushies. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, we also do it on the web, so we've got a, 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 on our web page we've got numbers of uh, uh, different ways to donate. There's a recurring donation. Um, these are these are numbers that that you can go to that page and and make um, make a, a one-time donation in increments of ten pounds. Why is it ten pounds? Because that's the currency we've got with Stripe with the UK company that or the not-for-profit that we've got here. Um, and there's also donations via crypto, um, so that's also on the web on the website. Um, and there's also something I forgot about is that the OpenSUSE the Welcome app that comes up on boot um, has got a button there now for donation. So we're getting we're getting a lot of uh, donations that way, and that and that's actually quite interesting as well because we haven't. Or well, I haven't broken down these these methods of you know what the donations are looking like when they come in. Um, I'm going to be doing that shortly, but we don't know how many are coming from the, for example, from the um, the donation page from from the welcome app. Um, I need to to fix that, but we don't know how many. But there, there's, I think there's a constant stream of donations now coming in every at least I'd say 50 50 euros a, a day or maybe 50 euros every second day. So it's working, and this is, e this is income that we could have had to run events if we had done this earlier. But now we're doing it, which is great, um, and hopefully this will be a way forward. So that's all I've got to say. You got anything to say, Doug? Uh, there, there is, um, if you want to scan right, if you want to scan right now and donate money, there it is. I'll leave this slide up for a while. Yeah, some of the, some of the also the, some of the interesting things was like with Fosdem, uh, I made a donation in the commodity beer, 
which brought in a lot of funds. So you can look at doing different things that'll bring in funds to the project. I, I mean, I, I'm happy with it. Uh, the, the crypto stuff, you could send the stable coin. I mean, it's currency. It's, it literally is a printed dollar for that. Um, but yeah, well, we're, we're progressing here and I, I'm just happy you're all here. And we like to move this forward and have more people involved, so. Yep, yeah, it's coming. How can uh, uh, companies and other people donate a higher amount of money until now only until 10 pounds or with this can to donate that is also restricted? How can companies sponsor OpenSUSE via the Geeko Foundation? We're working on that. Um, we could just uh, provide bank accounts. I think the, the, the answer to that is let's talk to the to the customers or the companies and say, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give you our bank account details. Um, something That's the easiest way to do it because um, we could probably do it with Stripe. But we're working on it right now. If, if anyone's got any any ideas, then let's talk about it. I mean, sponsorship programs within Yeah, there's, I mean, for example, um, Uh, you can do business accounts with Wise.com, and they'll let you do multi-currency yeah. things. We're that... using Wise already. Okay, so yeah. you can have the the bank account details in any currency that they support, yeah. and uh, that would probably make it a lot easier for people to donate. Yeah, well, as I, as I said, the donations are. I mean, it, it, it's okay to do hundreds or even thousands of, of pounds with our system. They just have to go. 10 times by 10, 10 pounds times 100 or 1,000, for example. Um, or, but the other, the other thing that's kind of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't meant to be a joke either. <laughs> it's just the way you do it right now. But uh, hey, we're, we're also having um, some corporate sponsorship and so next events we might have a gold, silver... Um, bronze sponsorship levels, um, but in terms of the random donations, I think we just need to get feasibility of the people who want to donate that much money. One thing too, we also have a, a tomorrow we have a workshop, so I feel like please, if you want to participate and drive this in forward, that'd be helpful. Any other? Oh, okay. I can't see anything. Um, you mentioned that people can donate also by buying a plushie, right? Sure, yeah. You get a percentage of that plushie. Yeah. And where does that plushie come from, like UK, Europe? Because a lot of people in, in South America, Brazil, for example, they would like to have a plushie. Okay. But the problem is uh, it's outside South America, so import taxes and the delivery, it's, it's impossible. Like, it wouldn't be worth buying. So doing it locally somehow would be a lot better. Yeah, so that, that's, that's a logistical point that's just that, that we it, that is very difficult. I mean, we even like um, Mauritius, right? Like, you had to have a certain certification that uh, I think Sousa had sent them some. And you needed a certain certification to actually, for them to accept it. The package was already there, but they couldn't receive it based on the local laws, right? It, we're going to have these problems because the world is filled with problems like that that never get solved. Yeah. And I yeah. know that I've been part yeah. of doing this for a long time. But, but I know that it'd be good to locally source, and you're, yeah. and you're correct. My, my main point is how could the Gecko Foundation be present as an entity, a legal entity in different regions of the globe? Because UK doesn't solve the problem, like, okay, you want to receive money from China, from Japan, yeah. from yeah. Brazil. Yeah. It's, it's a foreign currency. Yeah. It, like, if a company from Brazil wants to donate, it's, like, not well, out of the they, question, if, 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 but they need to go and 
huge leap, like they really need to be willing because it's going to add taxes and, and all sorts of legal issues. So if you have a local entity... And then, we're, then we're struck with other problems, which yes. is how many, how many entities do we have? Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And one, uh, we can send you a box of plushies and you can distribute them so long as people donate. Uh oh, <laughs> well, a box? Yeah, I don't think I should have either. Um, but I mean, that's it. So, you know, if a company in Brazil wants to donate money to a charity in the UK, which is we're going to we're just about to achieve that status, as opposed to being a not-for-profit, which is slightly different under law, then we can. Uh, I don't know what the local laws are in Brazil, but they can certainly do it. Um, uh, hmm? yeah, well, yeah, um, that's that's something we can't do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. At least in Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, any currency that is not a currency in Brazil, there is taxes on top of it. So. So you send money to a. If you use if you use Wise, Wise is doing the conversion, mm -hmm. and Wise is, is taking something, and Wise is technically paying that taxes on it. But what kind of tax are we talking about in percentage? Uh, in, in Brazil, it's called IOF. How, how that's, much? That's a, What's the percentage? No, no, no. For foreign currency, yeah. I think it's yeah. eighty. No. Eight, 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 eight. I think eighty. Eight. Eight or eight five. So, so that's eight so that's five. that really is something that we that we'll just we'd have to wear that and just accept a lower donation. Yeah. But the donation is there, which is what makes it important. You know, for example, speaking of logistics, Brexit just made it as made it a lot worse for the UK. Um, yes. There's all sorts of different things, and you just have to pay the <coughs> pay the taxes, and, yeah. and and just let's let's yeah. just get more money in. Yeah, but the main one of the main things is how to get a, the plushie into Brazil because a lot of people want. We can give you one. <laughs> we'll just give you the plushie right now. Yeah, but, but or I can get the, the the card machine out. You can you can donate for it. <laughs> right now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right for for Debian we have, but Debian doesn't exist, right? So we can't hold money. Uh, but in America, we have software in the public interest, which is uh, 503, whatever, yeah. uh, um, non-profit. And in France, we have a foundation that's non-profit. And I think we've got, we've got something in Japan, and we've got maybe something in South America. Yeah. And we generally hold the money in the place it was donated, so yeah. it doesn't have to cross borders. Yeah. Uh, if you wanted to do something in the States, I'm sure that uh, well, it's going to be a problem if you become a company, but um, they would happily hold money on your behalf in SPI, and you get they tax you 5% for running costs uh -huh. uh, because you know, they have to pay the, uh, the accountants and stuff, yeah. but you, you could just ask them and become a member of SPI. Uh, who, and who are they in this context? Uh, soft, software in the public interest okay. in... in uh, yeah. So, because Debian doesn't have a proper legal existence, yeah. uh, we have places that you can, you know, contract to have some servers with, and they're a sure. non-profit uh, organisation. Sure. I don't know whether our treasurers in France would be happy to accept funds on behalf of someone else. They might be, because I don't know what the structure of their organisation is. Yeah, well, we're we're setting up something in in the eurozone, anyway. Yeah, but if they're sitting there. Dealing with money for a, a mad, uh, non-existent free software project. Anyway, I, I think is they might go for it. They've got okay. uh, they've got a scrow accounts already. Okay. So it's probably worth contacting. Well, you can talk to me. Yeah. But SPI uh, might fit your bill in the states at least. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's and, talk and after. As for SPI. If you're transferring the money to another non-profit in a different region, that's fine. But then they're not going to be able to send you money to your limited company. Sure. Well, let's talk about it after. Yeah. yeah. 
Sorry, I was, yeah, I was just obstructing the uh, barcode. No. <laughs> Uh, can you fix kerning on the donate button on the thing? I told you it was a presentation put together in a hurry. Uh, uh, yeah, I know dog, that too. Dog and Patrick, uh, what? Uh, Would, wouldn't it be easier uh, if people in countries that are known as difficult to send goods to, mm -hmm. to have one person who exactly knows how to receive a gift yep. and re refund it and then uh, charge people a small amount of money for, uh, for, uh, for their... Uh, their part in it. Yeah, no, sure. And that would mean that they, yes, the people in, for example, Turkey would pay a couple of euros more than they would pay in Europe, but they would get rid of the whole thing and they could send them through locally. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree. That we just have to get that, I mean, that's almost a, that's a, that's a, a level of infrastructure that we will definitely have to put into place. Yeah. Having a foundation in every single country that needs a separate foundation, that's basically going to be impossible. Look at charities like uh, the Red Cross uh, uh, Child, so, Child Aid, etc. Yeah. So, so my answer to that is we, we're probably... I, I think the way forward is to have one in each each region. So there'll be a an, an Asian um, entity and an American entity, um, and they will they'll they'll do all the, their own sourcing. But that's that's a little bit off off far off, far off from now. Yeah, but but you never know. It might be done in 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 the next twelve months if we get enough donations. That that's it. It's we we can't do it. We're not taking any money from this. We've all got another. We've all got another job, or in my case, about five. Um, so, you know, if we can if we can get enough people in to in to do stuff, then you know, get we we'll, we're happy to accept help. Is the number one question statement? Any other questions? So enjoy the bar barbecue. Um, we are going to do a group photo. So if you could, as we exit here, just go out to the lawn and push people in that direction so that we can do a group photo. And join the workshop tomorrow if you want. Wait, no one's allowed to leave unless they've donated. <laughs> Wasn't that made clear? <laughs> <laughs>